Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We are raising public awareness about technology, energy, diversity, and globalism. This show is center stage. I am your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. And we are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu, the heart of downtown Honolulu very near Kumukuhua Theater. We're happy to have you here with us. Um, here in the studio, we have a gentleman by the name of Justin Davies, and we were just talking about how we are going to define him. I can tell you initially, his title is the Outreach uh, Coordinator with um, the Honolulu School of Art. Yes? Honolulu Museum of Art Honolulu School. Honolulu Museum of Art That's School. It's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. Yeah. Um, but the, the reason you are here is because I walked into the first Hawaiian bank where they uh, exhibit various artists around the island. Um, I walked in there and I stopped dead in my tracks. And I'm, I'm serious, this happened. I was with our office manager um, and my friend, Will, and we walked in and I went, uh, and I just stopped with my mouth agape and looked at your pieces because I had never seen anything like this. I don't, I'm, so I'm looking, I, I had never even seen the genre before. Mm -hmm. It's very cool stuff. And I, um, when we, we, so we made our bank deposit. Eventually he tore me away. Um, made our bank deposit and went back to the theater and I got on Facebook and said, I need to talk to this guy who knows Justin mm -hmm. Davies. And here you are. Thank you very much yeah. for coming in. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so um, Let's talk a little bit about what you do. If I could get your definition of what you do, and then Zuri, can we be ready to show one of his works after we get through our definition? Yes, thank you very much. We can. Okay, <laughs> great. What do you do? So, um, I, I guess I think of myself um, as somewhere in between photography and film or theater uh, because I'm using photography to create scenes and the way a filmmaker would have a set and um, uh, have some uh, actors rehearse for the plot or try out for the plot. I'm kind of always looking for characters for my scenes and then populating my scenes that hopefully, hopefully have um, some sort of narrative that the viewer brings to them. Um, so. If I could make movies, I would probably make movies, but lacking the know-how to do that, I create my scenes using other people's photos and my own. Okay, we're looking at a piece right now. Is, is there a name for this genre of art? So it um, generally is called photomontage. Um, the mon montage piece, um, um, I guess refers to a fairly seamless combination of elements, whereas mm -hmm. collage, you see the torn edges, and it's oh. very clear that it's cut pieces. Um, but photo montage really tries to create one cohesive scene. It, yeah, with the, at first glance, the, well, this one that we're looking mm -hmm. at now, um, this one, would you immediately recognize there's something, a lot of things really not right in mm -hmm. the natural world here. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the pieces that I saw at the bank initially, I looked at it and thought, oh, there's a bunch of guys diving off cliffs, mm -hmm. and then I looked, you know, looked more closely. We'll see that one later, mm -hmm. but... So you, the, what is, I think, most spectacular is that you're able to take these and put the color scapes together in such a way that it, they look almost like they belong together. Mm -hmm. all, the, all the elements look like they belong there as far as the aesthetics of the mm -hmm. image go. Yeah. Right? Yeah, well, I try to be kind of strict about um, staying within certain aesthetic parameters. So if some of the photos are all scratched up and dusty, I try to carry that throughout. If, um, you know, in the example of the, the uh, image we just looked at, there was a uh, photo colorization process called photochrome um, back in the 1890s and then um, a Detroit publishing company was putting out a lot of postcards I think uh, of different scenes around Europe uh, with a, a pretty um, consistent and limited color palette um, so I liked that color palette quite a bit and then um, so used a lot of those images from the 1890s and that, and then colorized some of my own uh, other black and white photos and some of my own photos to match that color uh -huh. scheme. 
So yeah. you are taking some of some. You're using your own photos in here and mixing mm -hmm. them in with other other ones. And but you are um, you are s digitally uh, mm -hmm. manipulating them. Yeah. So all, that they all done. I started them. out doing it on PowerPoint, <laughs> um, and that was kind of cumbersome. Um, and then uh, once I got my hands on Photoshop, that made the, the process a lot easier. But I work with all photos that are in the public domain, um, typically pre-19, anything pre-1923 is beyond copyright. Um, and uh, any photos taken by federal employees as part of their job are also in the public domain. So there's these architectural surveys that have been done over the past few decades of oh. a gazillion buildings around the United States. Um, and then I use my own photos as well in there. Um, so did you, uh, you said if you could do movies, you would do movies, mm -hmm. but instead, is that for real or is that yeah, just... Yeah, no, 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 that's, yeah, I, um, I'm a, a huge admirer of um, film. Uh, it's one of my favorite ways to spend my time is watching a movie. Um, and, and because I like how uh, film immerses you in this reality mm. and um, you know, you feel like when you're watching a film that you could turn a corner and you could discover the rest of that city that they're showing. Or um, um, it has a sense of going on beyond the actual time frame of the movie that you're watching. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, so I, um, yeah, but I, I never went to film school. And um, so I'd like to kind of set up my own scenes. Uh, okay, the one we're looking at now. Um, the one we are looking at now is uh, the original photo that you started with. Okay, um, the 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 building that we see in the background, and the people who are in front of. Uh, looks like they've got wheelbarrows. Mm -hmm. Or they yeah. do. Yeah. So that's part of the original. Um, am, am I correct? And then yeah. where did you where do you go from? You say here's the story. It's a beautiful structure. Um, wh where do you go from that to say okay, here's what I want to plop in here? What's your process like? Um, I found a couple shots of this um, building. Um, a train apparently went off the tracks and ran into the, the side of the building somewhere in the Detroit area. I'm from Michigan, so I have an affinity um, for uh, scenes of the Midwest. And um, so I found a few images of this, but no, like, you know, I'll often search for his, what the actual story is behind. I couldn't find any trace of this accident in the, the records. Probably if I did a more thorough search of newspapers around that time, I could have found some reference to it. Um, and uh, so I guess I, um, you know, <clears throat> I think about the artist as audience for the artwork. Because lots of times we think about, well, the artist is making the artwork for other people, which I am. But I'm also uh, the way you might have a dream. And then afterwards, you wake up and you say, hmm, what was that dream about exactly? And you kind of puzzle over it throughout the morning and the afternoon. And then maybe the next day you have a different take on it than you did the first day that you had the dream. Um, so for me, uh, it, with my artwork, I make the scene. I try not to ask myself too many questions about what I'm making. And then afterwards, I'm like, hmm, what's, what's that about? Really? <clears throat> you just go with the way you feel like you want to put these things together? Mm -hmm. I usually have some impulse. Like I knew when I found the train wreck scenes that um, uh, you know, there's certain themes I like return to. There's, I have a couple of train wrecks in my work, but um, um, and you don't mean that figuratively. That's literal. It's literal. <laughs> Although this, you know, that last image was kind of referencing a very personal train wreck um, in my life, which was um, you know, when I started making work for this show. My dad was alive, and by the time I got to this show, my dad. Um, had died um, kind of halfway through that period of working on all these pieces. Oh. And it was, uh, 
you know, it was uh, a heart condition that we'd known about for years and was kind of a train wreck waiting to happen, um, and he was doing all the right things for it, but um, it was progressive. And um, so, yeah, so a lot of this show ended up being, um, I guess, more personal than, I guess all of my work is personal on some level, but this one was more specifically related to uh, losing my father and kind of reflections on growing up and um, um, that mm -hmm. wove its way throughout a lot of the, the pieces. Yeah. And, and, and you felt like you saw that in after working on a piece you stepped back and... Said, yeah, oh, yeah. sometimes it was more like in, um, you know, sometimes I thought, okay, this kind of relates to this memory I have in some way and I'm going to sort of flesh it out, but uh, um, and then other times I just made the scene and said, hmm, not, let's see what that's about. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. So it can move differently through you. Yeah, that's a kind mm -hmm. of a cool way to discover yourself. I, I remember, you're making me think of, I, um, I paint as uh, a completely untrained person with a hobby. Um, <laughs> Uh, you're never going to see him anywhere. Fairly but, untrained myself, so yeah, I'd no say go kidding. for it. Yeah. Well, you're doing a lot better than I am. <laughs> With your, I remember starting a painting, and uh, I had an, an image in my mind, okay, this is where I'm going mm -hmm. vaguely. Mm -hmm. And then I found out that my boyfriend was cheating on me. Uh -huh, and I was going to uh -huh. move, you know, we were living yeah. together, and now yeah. my whole life is... So what had started out as a beautiful mm -hmm. tree turned mm -hmm. into like a black tree bleeding red yeah, leaves, yeah, you know? yeah. And I didn't mean to do yeah, that. The color, yeah. you know, I would work on it at yeah. night and then look at it and go, ooh, yeah, that, yeah, I was going through something there. It's kind of amazing how art comes out of us this way. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing about it. Uh, uh, okay, so mm -hmm. let's stop there. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go to our first break. We'll okay. come back and I'd really like to get into more of your background mm -hmm. and how you, uh, how this, you know, came out of you the first time. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so please stick with us. We're going to come back to you in about one minute. This is Center Stage. Thanks. Here's the deal. Um, I'm Jay Fidel. I'm the host of uh, Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy, which is the Energy Policy Forum's program on Wednesday. That's how we call Wednesday Energy Wednesday. We call it Energy Wednesday every Wednesday. <laughs> Are you surprised? Okay, and we, and we try to we get guys like Jim Alberts here from Hawaiian Electric who can tell us what's really going on in energy. We want to be informed. It's so important. It's the most important initiative in our state. <laughs> Clean energy is major, okay? And that's why we cover it on this show. That's the deal. What do you think, Sharon? I think that's great. That's why we're here every Wednesday from 4 to 5, and we hope you all join us so we can hear people like Jim coming on our show and co-host Ray Starling from Hawaii Energy. Okay, Jim, you've been here today. You've seen this. You heard what she said. What do you think? I think it's a tremendous opportunity for people to come together and talk about the issues. Oftentimes there isn't a good forum to bring these key issues out into the public and this is a tremendous way to go about it. And the, the activity of this show is essential to keep talking about energy because as you said, it's such an essential part of our lives that we need to pay attention to it and we need to think about the future. Okay, Ray, your turn. Well, this is a special time in the history of Hawaii where we're making some pretty radical changes in the way we uh, use energy and generate energy. And this show is the one place you can count on coming to every Wednesday and hearing something about the latest issues that are on the table, being discussed, that will affect us all going forward. So. Hi, we're back on center stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network. If you would ever like to join us in our studio here in Pioneer, Pioneer Plaza, you may do so. Just email Jay, that's J-A-Y, at thinktechhawaii.com, and he will hook you up. If you'd like to join the conversation from home or the privacy of your office, you may do so by tweeting us. You can tweet us at thinktechhi.com, and we will answer your question. We'll see it on the screen right here. We're talking with Justin Davies, who's a very unique photographer and artist. Um, so can we go back? Did you, you didn't grow up here. You grew up where in Michigan? Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay, I have a nephew. It's a university the, town. I have a nephew at the University Hospital. Uh -huh. okay. very, very proud of him. Um, yeah. 
Uh, okay, so were you, do you come from an artist family? My, um, my dad was always taking pictures when I was growing up. He always had a camera around his neck, um, um, but wasn't a professional artist, but always, um, you know, we had a, a dark room in our basement. Um, oh, wow. So uh, I got involved with photography, you know, I guess in my teens, uh, early teens, um, and um, yeah. I'm just going to stop you for a mm -hmm. moment because I don't know how old you are. When I was a kid and into photography, mm -hmm. you, you know, there were no digital cameras. It was, yeah. it was costly. You took a picture, you didn't know what you got until yeah. a week later yeah. when you got it developed. Yeah. So let me know where you were when you were a kid. Born in 1971, so I had a long, uh, long period in the non-digital okay, era. Okay, so you've gone through the evolution with me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I had like a medium format camera for a while and uh, developed my own film and Oh, so prints. you saved a little with that dark room in the basement. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, and then in high school, I took uh, photography classes in high school. Um, and then when I got to college, I kind of switched gears and focused on um, education and the sciences. And so didn't oh. do, um, except for one drawing class, didn't really study art um, in college. Um, and then missed it and then found my way back to it. Oh, okay. So did you, did you decide to go that way in education and the sciences because you had a love for it? Or because you thought, oh God, I gotta do something else. I'm not gonna make a living as a photographer. Yeah, it was probably some being overly practical. Um, and, and honestly, some of it was getting to college thinking I was going to pursue art and being somewhat turned off by um, how conceptual things were, um, how angsty things were on uh, the college art scene. Uh, it didn't really connect with my experience of art, um, the kinds of conversations that um, people were having in classes. Probably if uh, I had stuck with it, um, I would have found my way in, but uh, I got a little spooked by it all and decided, um, you know, I got really interested in, in biology and chemistry and, and working with, with kids. So huh. that uh, redirected me for a while. Okay. <laughs> and you, do, you went to school at University of Michigan? No, I went to a school called Hampshire College, which is in Massachusetts. Um, oh. And they're actually known for their photography program, but they are, because they're known for it, it's very hard to get a studio photography class because oh. everyone and their brother wants to take photography. So, um, so yeah, you have to take all these kind of uh, theory classes first, which is fine, but it, yeah, it was a little too intellectual um, uh, in some ways at that time for me. When, do you remember the first time you saw this um, montage art? Uh, it's not like I really saw it and thought, oh, I want to do that. I m more started dabbling with it. Um, I mean, as like a seventh grader, I had a, you know, one of the early Macintoshes, and I discovered cutting and pasting, and that became an extension of the art I had been doing more concretely with um, pen and pencil and watercolor before. Uh -huh. um, so kind of manipulating images on the computer is something that sort of grew out of teaching in a way, like I mean, you create PowerPoints for my students and, um, and really wanting like to showcase a specific subject that I couldn't find a pre-made image for. Um, and then, um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, at some point, I stumbled across the Library of Congress digital archives and found um, thousands and thousands of these little scenes of forgotten history. And so that got me really interested in, um, you know, kind of finding more about the lives of people who I came across or these scenes. You'd get like a scene like that train wreck scene, um, and you'd be like, or like um, here, the uh, you know, this expanse of oil fields um, in the background when I came across that. And I found like, you know, uh, dozens of these oil field panoramas. Um, and so, yeah, it, uh, it got me really kind of 
curious about it. I wanted to build out those worlds. See where you, oh, that is incredible. Mm -hmm. what, a st what a story you were telling with the Quonset huts and the girl milking the cow and the, something that looks like it should be in the movie Brazil. Uh -huh. the ground. <laughs> That's one of my influences. I did. Oh, yeah. I did enjoy that movie. So, yeah. Um. Um, so you're telling a story of a piece of Americana that has. It looks like it's something from the future and the past at the same time. That's my hope is, and that's what I like about the montage format is you can take these really disparate moments in time and you can yeah, um, bring, them bring them together. Yeah. I have. I have no. Um, uh, no background with this, so I look at this and I think that you obviously have an artist's eye for the light. Because then this is what mm -hmm. stopped me in my tracks because I just glanced at the mm -hmm. photo in the bank initially and went, oh yeah, that's interesting, and then went, wait a minute, because it looked real mm -hmm. because the, you've got it's the light, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Is that the most painstaking part of the process? Um. You know, it's a little bit like a, a magician. Uh, you know, a little sleight of hand goes a long way. So um, I do have to think about, you know, if I have two objects that are right next to each other and they're lit from completely different angles, that's going to kind of catch your eye. Um, um, there's, you know, things like atmospheric perspective where things in the foreground should be more contrasty. Um, yeah. And uh, in the back, it should be less contrasty um, and obviously smaller. <laughs> that's, that's the technical term for it. Yes, yes. <laughs> you should have really should have studied art in school. Right. <laughs> See, then I'd know how to describe that. Um, you know, my color ones. You, if you make the the background scene bluer, that's something that happens in atmospheric perspective, where the the mountains in the distance look more blue, so the the tones cool off as you head into the the background. So. Manipulating little things like that, um, just enough so that I want you to feel like you could turn a corner in one of my pieces and there would be more of this world to discover. Okay. Um, so I try to eliminate any kind of jarring juxtapositions. Um, but yeah, so lighting is one of those things but that I think okay. about. Are these lit from the same direction? Do I have to flip this one around so that it's lit from the same direction? Um, do I up the contrast of this image so that it blends in with how contrasty things are in the foreground? Um, yeah, okay. those are some of the things I think about. Do you, okay, so you hadn't seen this when you started playing with it and doing it, and obviously this is something that's born of a digital er era, mm -hmm. I mean, um, or computer generation. So now, are there? Who are your compatriots? Who else is out there doing this? Is anyone else in Hawaii doing this? Um, there's, hmm. You know, one. I'm like terrible with names. Oh, <laughs> um, so am I. Totally understand. So, so you can um, just say no. <laughs> <there's>, <laughs> there was a show um, at the museum. Um, um, what is it called? <laughs> uh, my museum friends are going to give me a hard time. Uh, decisive moments. Uh, it was. Uh, it was sort of this. Uh, it was from one collector's um, photographs from one collector's collection, and it kind of r ran the gamut from like 1800s to modern day. And some of the early, um, you know, uh, early 1900s photos were manipulated in the dark room mm -hmm. and you came up with some really great um, sort of photo montage qualities and then there would be you know ones that were done like I do them um, uh, digitally uh, right alongside those so I I guess I um, there's a couple of photographers who do work that I find interesting but I don't really I guess look at it that much it's not yeah I'm not uh, I find I get more inspiration from watching a movie or going for a walk in the uh, woods or thinking about a dream I had than trying to find someone who's doing what I'm doing. Um, there are like a lot of sort of digital artists who do um, stuff that I try to avoid doing, like you have the the castle that's up on the cloud and it's like raining <laughs> rabbits or there's sort of these like more improbable um, 
scenes, and uh, some of my stuff maybe has certain improbable qualities, but I, I want to obey the, the rules of physics as much as, as possible. Yes, yeah, so, so the giant rabbit would be an example of me bending those rules a little bit. Um, I think I saw, when I look, this is one that's hanging in the... Mm -hmm, it is, yeah. um, I saw the rabbit first, and I thought, oh, look, at there's a rabbit in like a junkyard, and then I went closer and went, oh, wow, no, it's all, you know. It's crazy how you blurred the background um, in, the, in the upper right. Mm -hmm. It just, it creates this off-putting effect. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was actually my original photograph that was shot with a really narrow plane of um, focus. Oh, over on the right, left over side. Over on the on the left side. It was left shorter. side. Yeah. Well, both. Yeah, all of that sort of shrubbery in the background is uh, photographs I took. Um, oh, so your own background on this one, and then things you brought in. Yeah. Actually, this is yeah about fifty percent my own photos and fifty percent stuff from the Library of Congress. I find it really cool that you say that you weren't really, in, you're not really interested in going out and looking to see what else is being done to help guide mm -hmm. you. Um, and it's very rare that I hear artists say that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's that they don't want to admit it or like we live in this world where you feel like, oh, and you have to see what the greats mm -hmm. are doing in order to get there. But I, I agree with you mm -hmm. um, from an actor's perspective. Mm -hmm. I agree that mm -hmm. I don't, I want to see what comes out of me first yeah you know yeah I mean I don't think I'm not influenced by other artists but I believe in sort of a, a long percolating process um, so that um, yeah I'm often not interested in trying to find someone doing stuff similar to what I'm doing I'd be more interested in a piece of music or something that's really um, different from what I do and then seeing how that, how that interacts works. with my interior landscape and yeah I like that term up. my interior landscape yeah. we're gonna yeah. we're gonna come back and talk more about Justin's interior landscape in just a moment we're gonna take a break please stay but we'll be back in about a minute Aloha I'm Kawe Lucas host of Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, 25 talk shows by 25 dedicated hosts every week, helping us explore and understand the issues and events in and affecting our state. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Aloha, this is Maria Mera, and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. We're here to inform, motivate, and entertain you. Join us. Hola, soy Maria Mera, y estoy aquí para invitaros a mi show bilingüe, Viva Hawaii en Think Tech Hawaii, cada dos lunes a las 3 de la tarde. Estamos aquí para informaros, motivaros y entreteneros. Apuntaros. Okay, we're back on center stage. I'm talking with Justin Davies, and I would, may I just say this, I would like to thank Richard Melendez, because he was the person who <laughs> saw my post on Facebook saying, I have to talk to this guy, someone connect me to him, so thanks, Richard. Yes, thanks, Richard. <laughs> we're back to Justin Davies. Um, uh, okay, so you, you started putting these things together, and you were, what, hanging them up in your house, giving them out to friends, or were you... Um, Doing anything with them I, initially? you know, initially I did um, have a nephew and niece in Michigan, and so I did a couple of little uh, montage scenes for them as little presents, and um, um, I uh, originally uh, came to Hawaii to study zoology and evolutionary biology and um, <laughs> spent a semester doing that and realized that it was, um, it felt like it really was stretching me away from my creative side. Um, I'd been a teacher, a classroom teacher before that. So it was sort of like uh, oh, yeah, we a forgot confusing to talk about set that. of yeah, uh, really career <laughs> turns. Um, yeah. And uh, sort of like, turn this way, no, that's not right. Turn that way, that's not right. And then kind of feeling like, um, 
I needed to uh, return to the arts, and that was what kind of what made the most sense to me. Um, so I actually started taking a, a drawing class at the Honolulu Museum of Art School um, uh, with a, a wonderful teacher, Anthony Lee. And as part of that class, um, I brought in some of these collage or montages I was working on, and he was really encouraging uh, of that. And um, so then I started to kind of show them around a little bit, met um, uh, the wonderful people over at Fish Cake, um, which is uh, Oh, art. by Bax Jelly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they took an interest in, in my work, and I did a show with them. Um, started that entering. That was your first? Yeah, that was my first show. <coughs> that's exciting. Yeah. How the yeah. hell? Here's the one that stopped me. Oh, yeah, there are people diving off. <laughs> yeah, this is one of my earlier pieces. And, um, it's just... Okay, so can I ask when mm -hmm. you look at when you sit back and look at this, you've created it, and then you sit back and look at it. What sort of thoughts do you remember went through your head about what you were saying? Um, I, you know, I really took an interest in the protagonist here, um, who appears twice in the piece. I think her name was like Catherine Deneuve or something like that. She was diving and a pool in like Coney Island or something. Oh. Um, and um, so I feel like a certain affinity for certain faces that I come across. Um, and um, yeah, this one is, is, I gave her a different pool. Um, this one I don't have a lot of interpretation for. It sort of is what it is. Um, Can I tell you what it says yeah, to me? Yeah. It looks really dangerous, and mm -hmm. she looks like she's thinking about it. She's recognizing that there's some danger here, but she's going to do it anyway. Yeah, this I agree. There's a certain courage to her um, yeah. um, contemplating diving into that improbable um, uh, scrap of water. Yeah, it doesn't look that deep, but she's going to mm -hmm. do it anyway, and I have some confidence that she's mm -hmm. going to be okay, Yeah, both of yeah. her. Uh, I, and there she is in that old bathing suit being, you know, so daring with it. I like it when yeah. women do that. Yeah. I see women doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of your earlier pieces. Now, how many different, so you have, you have a couple photographs of her. Mm -hmm. And what is the rock that she, is that an actual? So that's down below Diamond Head. There's some tide pools uh, off of Beach Road. Um, and... Uh, I had been doing a lot of macro photography down there um, with a, a lens that allows you to get a really up close picture of small things. Um, so these are pebbles. These are, you know, the rock she's on for scale. If you look below her foot, the foreground yeah. uh, one, there's a little white snail um, oh, about, okay. you know, a couple inches below her, her feet there. That's sort of the scale. Oh, and then if you look okay, at the okay. water, it's like water doesn't ripple like that. You know, there's obviously some disconnect between her size and the, and the, yeah, the, the water, water size. Um, it's disconcerting. It's a little, um, it's interruptive, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's yeah, discordant. I, I, I hope. <laughs> it's it, good. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Um, I don't know why. What is it that mm. about something that is, you know, discordant that is attractive? We're both maybe we're both just weird. Maybe maybe that's <laughs> the thing that's going on here. <laughs> but there's <coughs> enough people who enjoy it. So you went to Fish Cake, uh -huh. and they said, okay, we want to show your work here. And then, um, uh, and uh, but they're a shop. It, it's not a gallery, so they were showing. Yeah, they're it. a shop and a gallery, oh. so they do a lot of interesting things. They um, do interior decoration, so they they had this deal, which I think they're still doing with Pig and the Lady, um, just a few blocks over, where they find the artist. They essentially curate, and they planned all the interior of Pig and the Lady, I think, as well. So I did a show there um, as well. Um, do you ha do you have a lot of people buying your work? Or I, I don't know, a lot is such a... Such yeah, a I haven't, um, at least at this point, I haven't really 
pursued that. I've, I feel like I've done okay. Like, I mean, I do sell. I've sold like five of the pieces in the show at um, First Hawaiian Center so far. And, um, but I, it's, it's kind of, you know, I, I, I have a, a half-time job at the museum and I'm half-time working as an artist. And so I don't, um, and my half-time job at the museum sometimes isn't just a half-time job. Mm -hmm. um, it, and so I don't have a lot of time, and I have a wife and a daughter and, you know, family responsibilities and all of that. So I don't have a lot of time to try and market my work. Um, and I, it, at this point, I'm more interested in developing my ideas, and then hopefully someone will like you will stumble across it and take an interest in it. Um, yeah. Yes, and I have. Um, oops, I didn't mean to be looking at myself. I thought we were going to look at some more of your work. We probably should. We only have a few minutes yep. left, so what else have we got to look at, Zuri? Thank you. Okay. That's just lovely. With the, um, so you colored the, what's the proper name for the, Balloon. Oh, the huge manatee. You know, what a, I'm a dirigible, to say. A dirigible uh, airship. Um, <laughs> that's what I was yeah, to that's what it is. Uh, I did color that. Yeah. Okay. This one is this one at the bank, or maybe I saw yeah. this on the. Yeah. Yeah. So the ones I included in this are all up at the the bank right oh, okay. now. Okay. Um, uh, so l let's say that is the uh, first Hawaiian Bank Center on King and, or a Merchant and um, a Bishop just down from Kumukuhua Theater. That's where you can go to see these. And so she's standing on top of a mountain. She is, mm -hmm. uh, um, which just ma it, it just elevates her, but the scale of it then is, I think, you know, what was I reading recently? That chaos only looks like chaos because it is a smaller picture. If you expanded it, it wouldn't look like chaos anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but this is an expanded picture that makes it look like chaos again. Hmm. To me, yeah. or you know, you look at her, yeah. and here's um, uh, what is it? Robert Persig said in Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance: We stand on an endless beach and pick up a handful of sand and say, "This is reality." Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so we look at the picture of her standing on top uh -huh. of the mountain. It's nothing until you see the dirigible. Uh -huh. I don't know. I find yeah. you, I find yeah. your work so moving. Yeah. Well, it's really nice to hear because I don't like. You know, I make this work, and then I don't really know like how people receive it or think about it. I often want to be a fly on the wall so I can like um, hear people saw it. So it's it's really interesting for me I, to hear. I wish you could have. I wish you could have been there to see me stop in my. I mean, I, I about fell out of my shoes. And this one, yeah, with the town, it took me a while to notice the whole little farm scene way in there. Can we zoom down in there, Zuri? Is that possible? To that little, is that a a chapel down there. If you look into mm -hmm. the lower um, right-hand quadrant there, Zuri, and the, the pictures have amazing, oh, that's okay. The, the pictures have uh, such clarity, such, um, some of the pictures, the background pictures that you're using have so much depth to them. That's, that quality must be something you have to insist on. Yeah, yeah. I, there we go. Yeah. yeah, so there's a little farm down there. This one was sort of inspired. Um, I went to the Big Island and I did one of those little treks out to see the lava. And there's this um, bed and breakfast out there on the lava and this whole community that's kind of in this very tenuous uh, location um, on fairly fresh lava flows. And every once mm -hmm. in a while, the lava comes down and takes out one of their houses and they have an insurance policy and the neighbors gather around and watch their house go down. Um, so yeah, it kind of struck me when I was there. Wow. Um, so that's the horses. Yeah, that that's sort of the they, they're, dangers they're, coming. Because that little village is very vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's the little scene. There it is. Oh, good. Thank you, Zuri. You got in there, man. There's, I didn't know there's a windmill down there. Yeah. <laughs> and my family has a, a really old picture of my grandmother um, when she was a girl. Um, it was this old panoramic picture of my grandmother on her parents' dairy farm in, um, in the Central Valley of California. Mm -hmm. And they were Portuguese immigrants. And um, so there's some affinity there for that little oh, yeah. farm scene. Too. Have, you, have you ever had family or friends say, here's a picture of my family. What can you do with this? Or the, the house I grew up in? I've had a little bit. And I, um, 
the nature of putting these together is that I, I can't like go in and say, I'm going to make this scene because maybe you know that boat really doesn't fit as I thought it would, or I, I just can't find a good boxer for this scene. Um, <laughs> so you know, it's. I often say that. So I haven't kind of. I've had a, a few people have said, "Can you do this?" And I sort of been like, mm, "Not at this m moment. Yeah. It's not really where I'm at with that." Yeah. Well, that's cool. I mean, that if you wanted to go commercial, that's a way to go commercial. But you don't want to do that. And, and I appreciate that about your integrity. So this, now wait, at first glance I'm looking at this and I don't see that this has been manipulated. What, um, what is the, in the background? What is in the foreground? <laughs> um, so it's two children. Uh, I'm not sure if they're both girls or if they're playing dress up. It was sort of this series of costume shots of uh, kids on this one block somewhere um, uh -huh. and um, so I, I conjoined them um, <laughs> digitally. Um, so that's sort of one thing that's going on there is that the hair goes one into the oh, other it and, does. and the okay. dress is a continuous. Um, oh, it looked like they were just standing back to back for a minute there. Oh, yeah. um, so, yeah, this is, uh, this one has sort of a funny story that inspired it. Um, what is that? Uh, I was uh, in high school. I was a gymnast, and and that too. I, that huh? too. Yes, I pursued many uh, <laughs> things. And your house must be just a, <laughs> a barrel of fun. My my wife keeps me in check. Um, but um, in our garage, we had. I was trying to learn an iron cross, and I was always kind of a scrawny gymnast, so it was a challenge for me to learn an iron cross. So there's a system of like having a belt. Uh, um, that was connected to cables that went up through pulleys um, and then oh, the, the rings racist. so that it sort of lightens your weight as you and you can start to build up your muscles for an iron cross so um, I had this connected to a beam in the garage um, and my brother was in his automotive phase at that point and he had about half of an MG midget up in the rafters above the ring apparatus. <laughs> so I was in there with uh, my fellow gymnast, Adris, and uh, uh, I was strapped into this belt, and all of a sudden there's this crack, and so I pull off oh. the belt, and we go running out, and we look back, and there's a muffler, a radiator, a car door, oh bird cages, like all this stuff raining down um, oh. behind us. So anyways. Sometimes I just take a little memory like that and play with that. Um, oh, so God. I, I'm sorry, I have to wrap up. It's I, okay. I really uh, um, I appreciate your art. It's lovely to talk Thank with you. you. I, um, I, I saw some of your stuff online. I think I just Googled your name, Justin Davies. And yeah, justindavies.me. Dot me. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I highly write. There's a lot more that we haven't shown that, that you can mm -hmm. find if you go out and, and look yeah. for it. And I really look forward to seeing more of you, more Great. of your work. Um, and go check it out at the bank or wherever. Okay. And good luck to you. Yep, Keep up going, June. Man. Thank you. Keep up with that artistic integrity. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's fun. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you for being here to watch our show. There's a few other people I would like to thank. Our studio overlord, Zuri Bender, who is in my ear. Our floor managers, uh, manager, um, Rich Pravis, who's right over there. Thank you, Rich. And our um, producer, Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put all of this together. Thank you for being here, and we will see you next week. We're going to talk with a man who is um, a locations manager for Hawaii Five-0. He helps make what you see on film look like something that it is not in reality. We'll see you then. Bye. Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you.